So now we're going to take a look at this capital investment appraisal question, Londro PLC, which was question 17 in the specimen paper two. So let's just have a quick look through the, uh, the information we're given. So the directors of Londro PLC, which is a large holding company, are considering two alternative investment projects. Whichever project is chosen, the company will have to borrow the initial investment at a variable interest rate of 4% per annum. So variable means it's not fixed. It could um, go up or it could go down, more likely to go up. Um, project A, this project involves the exploitation of mineral resources in an underdeveloped country. The resources would provide cheap raw materials for other companies in the Londro group. Um, it will result in large numbers of local workers being employed on low-skilled jobs bringing a boost to the country's economy. So that's project A. The other choice is project B, which is to build a shopping and leisure complex on ex-industrial land in the north of England. The land is available due to the closure of the steelworks, which was the main employer in the area, and the complex would provide significant job opportunities in the retail and leisure sector. Uh, the FD has carried out investment appraisals on both projects, and that's been summarized below. So project A, an initial investment of 80 million, project B, 50 million. NPV, net present value, 950,000 for A, 650,000 for B. Payback period, 10 years for A, 15 years for B. And the estimated life of the project, 15 years for A and 25 years for B. So we don't have to actually do any of the calculations there. They've all been done for us. It gives us a little bit more information down here. The net present value, so remember we use discounted cash flows there, was calculated using a discount rate of 9% for both projects. Okay, so um, one thing we might want to ask is, is that a realistic rate? That's been um, arrived at um, using the current return on capital employed, which is 5%, plus the interest rate of 4%. So they told us about the um, borrowing, the initial investment at 4%. Um, so let's uh, assess the two projects and recommend to the directors the one they should select. In terms of definitions, um, it's probably a useful point to think about what payback and net present value actually mean. So payback is the amount of time it takes the project to recover or pay back the initial outlay from raw cash flows. Um, so literally just looking at the money that's going to come in, the money that's going to go out. It's a very simple or crude measure of the likely success of the project. It doesn't take into account the fact that money loses value over time or the cost of borrowing. Um, it also ignores any cash flows beyond the payback period. So um, it concentrates very much on early cash flows, which are easier to predict and should therefore be more accurate than those arriving later, arriving, arising later in the life of the project. So net present value, NPV, is the total value that will be added to the company over the life of the project. Um, it's more sophisticated than payback because it discounts the cash flows. So the raw cash flows are discounted by a factor to take into account things such as the cost of borrowing or the opportunity cost of using cash that could be invested elsewhere. So uh, there's a number of things that would um, lead a company to come up with a particular discount factor and interest rate that they're going to discount the cash flows by. And in this question, it does actually tell us they're going to be discounting it by 9%, which is made up of 4% cost of borrowing and 5% um, return on capital employed that they want to achieve. Um, so ultimately, if we get a positive net present value, then the project is viable. It means it will add that amount of value, providing the, the cash flows, the forecasts are accurate, will add that amount of value to the company. Generally, if it's negative, it's a no-go, unless it's a cost. If we're comparing two costs, then they are going to be negative because there's no inflows. So if we were looking at maybe a bus company replacing its entire ticket system, um, there's no income generated by that. It's just something it's got to do. Um, so you know, we maybe choose the one with the lower net present cost, but generally we don't see that arising in our, um, our specification. So we don't do a, you know, we don't do a project that's got a negative NPV because ultimately it's going to cost us money. Okay. So as with all of these questions, we've kind of weighed up, you know, what we're being asked to do. We've got two projects. We've got to, you know, assess them and make a recommendation, which one the directors should accept. Um, first thing to do is think about the calculations you can do. Now, it's pretty limited with this question because they've already worked out NPV and they've already calculated um, the payback period. If you want a refresher on how to calculate those things, have a look at my THAB 
um, limited video, which is on um, it's on the playlist for Paper 2 and Capital Investment Appraisal, I think. So I'll try and put a link to it at the end of uh, this video as well. So can we draw some comparisons? So some really obvious ones here, which are only going to get a say 2 marks, but there are five of those available. So let's make sure we get them. So the MPV for A, 950,000 compared with B, 650. So MPV is 300,000 higher for A. Payback period much faster for A, 10 years compared with 15 for B. Um, estimated life of the project, so it's a much shorter project. Project A, 15 years, presumably before the uh, mineral resources are completely depleted. But 25 years for Project B, which if you remember was the, um, the leisure complex in the north of England. Um, payback, I seem to have repeated myself there. Um, initial investment, 30 million higher for Project A, but the NPV is only 300,000 higher. Okay, so um, 30 million higher. One of them was five, uh, I think Project A was 50 million, Project B, 80 million. So quite a big difference, but only 300,000 extra um, NPV. So you might ask the question, well, is it worth that extra risk, you know, another 30 million just to achieve 300,000 NPV? Um, and then the interest payable, 3.2 million per annum. So that's 80 million times the 4% for, for Project A and 2 million per annum for Project B. So that's 50 million times the 4%. So quite a lot of difference there in the amount of interest, 1.2 million. I'm already leaning quite heavily towards uh, Project B. I don't know what your feelings are. Obviously, with, with a question like this, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, but financial factors, let's consider those. So Project A, just to summarise, I think this is the third time we've seen this, payback is five years faster, MPV 300,000 higher. Um, payback is close to the end of the life of the project. So, um, you know, if we're getting towards the end, um, that might, it may actually end up, um, in reality, not paying back. Um, project B has a longer life by 10 years. It's got a lower initial investment, 30 million less um, than A, which is a good thing. And there are more years left of the project after the payback period, so to produce more cash flow. So financial factors that are common to both. Has the correct discount factor been applied? So we don't really know. It's quite hard to forecast that. We are told that the interest rates are variable. And if we'd been doing this maybe 10 or 15 years ago, you know, interest rates have been very stable. Currently, who knows what might happen to interest rates? They're starting to creep up. So we may find that uh, we haven't used the right discount factor there. So will the cost of borrowing remain at 4%? Unlikely, um, the question states that it's variable. Um, and will the return on capital employed remain at 5%? That could go either way. So what we should probably do is conduct some sensitivity analysis. That's just a fancy way of saying recalculate the figures using a range of, of interest rates. So try it on a you know, much higher rate, maybe go up in increments and see what happens. Are we still getting a positive net present value? Is the project still paying back if we chose a discount rate, you know, 10%, 11% or whatever? So, um, or we could look at a lower one, but I think probably 9% is pretty low. Um, but uh, yeah, some sensitivity analysis would be helpful here. Um, Non-financial factors we need to consider. So this is just stuff that's given to us in the question and we can maybe try and embellish some of it with what we know about, you know, damage to the environment and so on. So Project A is going to have some obvious impact on the environment. They're mining um, some scarce resources. So exploitation, that's not going to be good for, for brand reputation. Um, are we paying a fair price? Again, if we're not, then that could lead to problems with our brand reputation. Um, or are the cheap resources being used to subsidize other areas of the business? So, you know, what's our motivation behind this? Is it ethical? Um, providing employment opportunities in a foreign country, that might be seen as good or bad. It could be seen as positive. It's helping an underdeveloped country improve their conditions and living standards. But again, it could be seen as exploitation. So exploitation of the resources, exploitation of the workers as well. Um, Project B, on the other hand, could have quite a positive impact. So I mean, we might say that the, um, the extra traffic might be bad, um, traffic and pollution, everybody driving to this new out of town uh, complex, but we are using land that's currently derelict. So it should be much easier on the eye um, and bring lots of positives. So positive impact on the local economy, the still works is closed. So we've got high unemployment in the area. That's all gonna be good potentially for our brand reputation. Okay, we've got a number of limitations to think about. So how reliable is the data used in the calculations? The problem with cash flows is it's quite easy to forecast what might happen in the next few months, but how reliable are cash flows when we're talking 10, 15, 25 years in the future? I would suggest not terribly reliable. 
Okay. Um, is there any guarantee that either of the projects are going to be successful? Have we done some market research regarding the shopping and the leisure needs of, uh, of the north of England? Do we need extra shops? Do we need extra leisure facilities? Um, you know, if we don't, if we're already oversubscribed for those things, then we may struggle to get that. Um, off the ground. So just a question that we can ask. We don't know, but uh, it's a limitation we can identify. Okay, in terms of recommendations then, which one should the directors select? Well, there's no right or wrong answer. As we've seen before, you could say they should choose project A as the payback's faster. It would secure a supply of raw materials for other companies in the group. So that would give them some um, stability. They wouldn't be reliant on external suppliers. Or you could go for option B because it's got a much lower initial outlay. Um, and it's going to provide job opportunities and boost the UK economy, which will be good for Londro's brand reputation. So if we can, you know, concentrate on things at home, then potentially that's better than, uh, than things abroad. Don't advise them not to do either of the project that doesn't answer the question. So as always, don't sit on the fence. You will get splinters. So sometimes it's OK to, you know, hedge your bets. In this instance, it isn't. There's two projects and we have to choose one. The question clearly asks that. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of guidance. I'm not going to write the answer for you, but um, yeah, you can have a practice at that. Um, but this is pretty standard, pretty straightforward. We've seen questions like this in the past. We've seen them under the old ACCN4 specification. Um, in those days, there was a lot more calculation to do in terms of cash flow. So maybe we should be watching out for that. Make sure that you're happy um, producing a cash flow forecast as ever. Just make sure there's no depreciation in there. It's a non-cash adjustment. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video um, and watch out for future releases. Thanks very much for watching.